Hey what's going on guys, Turty Wurzy here and welcome back to another Minecraft modeling tutorial for version 1.15 and also 1.14. In this tutorial we're going to be going over events. So first thing you may be asking, what are events and why would I need one? So basically events are uh, something that happens in the game. So for example, um, let's say an entity jumps. So when an entity jumps, an en event is fired, and uh, that is added to the event bus. And then any other um, events can hook onto that event, and they can modify it so something else happens when that entity jumps. Or, for example, when an entity dies, or uh, it doesn't have to be about entities, so it could be um, rendering, so uh, render tick event, I think it's called. Um, or just tick event, so you can do things when a tick passes, um, when a uh, rendered, when a tick, every tick something is rendered, you can do something. There's loads of different events, and you will just kind of have to find them yourself. There's not a defined list that you can find that easily. Um, the best thing I could advise is going to your um, going to here net Minecraft, and if you go to where is it? There are some client events. So if you go client uh, entity, nope, util, no, I don't remember. But there are some events in here. Let's see if I can find them. Util, no. But there's definitely events in there and Minecraft Forge, if you go in here you can find event and there's all these different events, like loads of different events. And uh, you can hook on to any of them. So as you can see there's hundreds of different events, all the way from tick event all the way up to player brood potion event. Um, if you ever wanted stuff like that, it goes very in depth. So there's probably an event for most things. If not, you can always create an event, um, which is a bit harder to do, but it's always possible. So once you have found the event you want to do, um, you're going to want to create an events package, which I've already made. I made that in the setup tutorial. So just create an events package inside your main package, and in here you need the event class. So you can call this anything but the general uh, naming scheme would be um, something event so I'm just gonna call this um, uh, test jump event because I'm going to be modifying when an entity jumps okay so this class needs to be um, an event bus subscriber, which we've gone over um, in a few things in the past, such as our item in it, which is an event bus subscriber. It's a mod event bus subscriber. And we're basically going to have this um, for our event. So at the very top, we're going to have at mod dot event bus subscriber. And it's going to be slightly different to our init classes. So firstly, it's going to take in mod ID is equal to um, tutorial mod dot mod ID. So you always need to put in the mod ID. Just import at mod. There you go. And there are now two other parameters. Now, one of them you need, um, and it can be one of two values. Actually, it can be three, but only two major ones and the other one is also one of two values but sometimes you don't need it so I'm gonna try and explain that to the best of my ability but I am NOT fully um, experienced in this so it's a bit different for 1.15 so the next thing is the bus so the bus is either a bus dot forge or a bus dot mod so you can do bus is equal to bus dot and once you've done that uh, let's just import bus. Let's let's get bus imported so we can see what we want. Okay. So now if we do bus dot, we can see forge and mod. Um, most of the time you're going to want to use forge, but there are some cases where you'll use mod. 
Mod is normally if you are modifying uh, your own event or another mod's event. Forge is if you're modifying um, any other Forge or uh, Minecraft event. So that will be bus stop Forge. Um, and the last thing is uh, the side. So um, what dist it's on. So what you can do is do value is equal to dist. And there's dist.client um, dedic and dedicated server. I don't know why there's two of both. Uh, not sure. But there's dist.client and dist.dedicated server. Um, depending on the event, you will need to know which one this is. So, uh, for example, if it was a render event or something adjust rendering, that will need to be on the client. So that would need to be value equals dist.client. If it was something that is server only, uh, such as... Uh, 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 I can't think of anything that's server only at this current moment. But if it was something that's server only, you would do uh, disk.dedicated server. Um, but for what I'm going to be doing, and honestly for a relatively large amount of the events, you don't need to specify that as they run on client and server. Uh, inside of here, we're going to have our actual event. So what's going to happen and what event we're going to use. So first we need to do at subscribe event, it's just so that it links to uh, the event bus subscriber, because um, obviously this doesn't do anything unless you have a method with the annotation at subscribe event. And that just basically tells it this is what method you're going to need. So this needs to be a public static void as it's public because this needs to access it it's static because once again this needs to access it and void because we don't want to return anything we have no need to return anything i'm just going to call this um the same as our class name so i'm just going to call this test jump event and let's make a space there and this is going to take in the event. So let's just make that a method and import subscribe event. Okay. So inside of here, this is going to actually be the event. So I'm just going to put living jump event. So living jump event. Now this, I'm just going to have this as a very kind of boring event. Um, so we're just going to have living jump event and call that event. So that's the name of our event. And uh, yeah. So this is fired when a living entity jumps. If you look right here, living entity, living jump event is fired when an entity jumps. This event is fired whenever an entity jumps in entity living base dot jump, entity magma cube dot jump, and entity horse dot jump. It is fired via the forge hooks dot on living jump, and this event is not cancelable. So what it means by not cancelable is uh, you can't cancel the event once it's been fired. That's that's not something you can do. So in here you can do a relatively large amount of things. Um, but I'm just going to be covering something very basic, really. Um, and it could be useful for a lot of people, really. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, just to test um, that our event actually is fired, um, we can do system... Actually, no, we'll use our logger. So we'll go to tutorial mod dot logger. Uh, did we not make our logger public? Okay, let's make our logger public in our main class. If you don't already have this, uh, you can put this in your main class, and that's just the logger. It's better than sys out, so you might want to use that. And then you can do dot logger dot and then you can do all these different things i'm just going to have dot info and that's just going to take in a normal string and that's going to be um what should i say um test jump event fired and that will just help you um to know that your event is actually fired and then you, you know you can delete this afterwards um, I already know this is going to work, but I'm going to keep it just to show you um, how that 
how that plays out. And the next thing you can do is uh, declare the living entity so you can get a few more uh, things. So if we do living entity, and I'm going to call that living entity, and that is going to equal event dot get entity living, and just import living entity. Now, as you saw, when I did event dot, it came up with a lot of things. Now, a lot of these you don't need to worry about. Um, you can check if the event, like, I'll, I'll go through some of these real quick. So you can uh, check if the event equals an object. You can get the class of the event. Uh, you can get the entity, the entity living, the listener list, the phase, uh, the result, the hash code, uh, if it has a result, if it's cancelable, if it's been cancelled, um, you can notify the event, you can notify all, um, you can set it to be cancelled, but you actually can't do that with this event because it's uh, not cancelable. You can set the phase, set the result, um, you can get the event to string, and you can wait with all these different ones. So, um, a lot of these you uh, a relatively large amount of these you won't use um, like hash code, git result, git phase, listener list um, notify all, not notify, set cancelled phase, result, string and wait you probably won't use any of those um, and obviously yeah so mostly you're just going to want to use get entity living and on very rare occasions actually uh, get entity because it's always going to be an entity living anyways which extends entity so there's no reason to do event dot get entity but whatever um, so you can do um, in fact let's get the world I think the world would be a good thing to get uh, just so you can modify anything in the world I'm not going to be using it but I'm just going to show you how you could use it so world uh, world is equal to living entity dot get entity world and then that allows you to basically modify the world so obviously then I could do world dot set block state just as an example here uh, pause so pause is going to be living entity dot pause and the state is going to be uh, I don't know uh, block in it dot example block dot get default state for example and um, that's something you could do with the world just so you know um, let's let's set the position plus five um, get position dot uh, add zero five zero and then we can go to that, and that will just add 5 to the uh, Y. Just like that. And that's just going to be a little test thing I'm doing. But obviously, you know, you can do anything in this event, really. Um, anything that you have access to, you can modify, basically. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually add two potion effects to the entity. So I'm going to do uh, living entity dot add potion effect a new effect instance and this is going to be the actual effect so effects dot and then all these different effects I'm going to add jump boost for uh, 600 ticks or seconds seconds and um, a modifier of 255 and just import effect instance and then that will just add uh, the jump boost effect for 600 seconds and with modifier or amplifier of 255 and then to add another one you literally just do the same thing again so living entity to add potion effect a new effect instance and this time I'm going to do effects dot resistance for 5000 255 Basically, that will just launch them into the air and they won't die when they come down because they have really high resistance. Um, you can also do 
Well, you can do anything with the entity, really. So if you do entity dot, you can see all these different hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of methods. Um, I'm going to make it glow. So glow, set glowing to true. And then it will be glowing as well. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Um, that's actually all I'm going to do. So yeah, that's it. That's that's it for the end uh, for the event. Um, obviously, you can use any other event. You can do lots of different things, a lot of different things. And when I say a lot, I mean you could literally have your whole mod an event, kind of. Well, yeah, you could, kind of. I shouldn't have really said that because that's not entirely true. But it's mm, you could. If your mod didn't add in any blocks or items, you could have your whole mod as an event. Um, yeah, if your mod doesn't add any objects and it just modifies you know, normal stuff, you could you could base your whole mod around an event. And you know, events are really fun. Like I I love events. Uh, I really do because you could do anything. Like you literally let your imagination run wild. And. Yeah, that's why I love events. So let's run the game and let's see if this uh, let's see if this works, shall we? So yeah, I will see you guys in the game. Okay, so guys, as you can see, we are now in the game. And actually, I'm just gonna make this not full screen for a second. So um, first, I'm going to jump, and you'll see, you sh or at least you should see, if you check the log down here. And also check the top right of my screen. You should see I get an effect up here, and it should say uh, "test jump event fired" down here. So I'm just going to jump. As you can see, I get jump boost and resistance. It said uh, "test jump event fired." I don't know why it fired twice. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why it fired twice, but that shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, oh, it fired on the server and the client. Oh, no, render and the server. So, yeah, client and server. So, if you wanted it to only happen on the client or only happen on the server, you need to specify that. That's quite important, actually. And, obviously, if I actually jump now, I'm going to fly into the air. Uh, as you can see, it sets a block above my head. So, I don't actually go anywhere. Which is <laughs> interesting. Uh, at least, as you can see, guardians don't actually jump. Then apparently, huh? I thought guardians actually—I thought that's like jumping, but I guess it's not jumping, is it? Yeah, so it's actually impossible for me to jump above that block. But you know, you could do a lot of things with this for sure. But yeah, um, if you guys did enjoy this uh, tutorial. Please do be sure to smash your face in that like button and subscribe. Uh, if you really enjoyed, please do be sure to share it, of course. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be uh, tags, also known as or dictionary, or at least it used to be known as or dictionary, uh, but now it's called tags. Um, so yeah, that's that will be the next video, and I will see you guys then. So goodbye.